Hello, everybody. Welcome to Broadway.com's Live at Five. It is Friday. Happy Friday. Yes. May 17th. I'm Beth Stevens. I'm Andy Lovejoy. <laughs> Andy, it's, a <laughs> it's all good. Yeah. It's as I said, it's Friday. It's Friday. It's because we have Tony nominee Derek Baskin here from Ain't Too Proud. We're going to get to Derek, but first, I want to say hello to Caitlin Moynihan. <gasps> hello, everybody. So yes, we're going to talk to Derek Baskin. Yes. He's wearing his Tony nominee button. Yes. But first, our top five. Another play is officially hitting the boards. Yeah, so this is pretty cool. Uh, we found out today that David Byrne, the acclaimed lead guitarist Talking of Talking Heads, uh, his theatrical concert, American Utopia, which was a hit across the UK, will be arriving on Broadway at the Hudson Theater. Cool. Uh, so this uh, will begin performances on October 4th and officially open on October 20th at the Hudson. Before that, it will play the Emerson Colonial Theater in Boston from September 11th through 28th. So this sounds like a really cool piece. It was uh, created with Annie B. Parson and Alex Timbers, who's a Tony nominee this. Oh, is he nominated for Beetlejuice? Beetlejuice. Well, director yeah, of Beetlejuice. There you go. Director oh, yeah. Of yeah. Um, so, uh, really cool kind of re uh, theatrical mix of this album, American Utopia. So, check it out on Broadway or in Boston. Cool. This show is unstoppable. Guys, there's a show. It's called Tootsie. It's got 11 Tony nominations, and apparently, it's going on tour. This is no surprise. Every single day, we're like, yes. and this show's also going on tour. This is when the tours get announced. But they are also saying they're going to go to the West End, which what? is pretty cool, too. Uh, they will launch their American North American tour at Shea's Buffalo Theater in Buffalo, New York, in the fall of 2020. We don't have dates yet. We don't have casting yet. And we don't have additional cities yet. But... Tootsie, but it's going. or as my children like to say, Tootsie will be taking the world by storm. Look, they also said they're going global. What? Oh my gosh. They want to go to the West End in 2021. They want to go to Australia. Not want to. They're saying they are going to Australia, New Zealand, oh Singapore, gosh. Thailand, Hong Kong, and Taiwan. Confirmed. Okay, y'all. Let's do it. Some actors are going to be shaving a lot. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> and the future is going back to the stage? Yeah, so this is actually happening. The Back to the Future musical is arriving in the UK next year. Now, this is a musical based on the 1985 film. The musical adaptation has been in the works for some time. It was supposed to arrive in the UK in 2014, and due to a number of glitchy reasons, it was delayed. So now it will arrive in Manchester uh, at the Manchester Opera House in 2020, beginning on February 20th. Uh, so a lot this, of twos. yeah, yes, right. Go on. Ollie Dobson, who is a super talented West End star, will take on the role of Marty McFly, which was indelibly created by Michael J. Fox. Uh, and then after the Manchester run, it will arrive in the West End with theater and dates to come, and hopefully Broadway. And I just want to say who's writing it because it's yes. pretty cool. Yeah, totally. Bob Gale. Alan Silvestri, and Glenn Ballard, the Grammy winner. Yes, Glenn Ballard, and directed by Tony winner John Rando, who is acclaimed for You're in Town, On the Town, anything with All the, the town. town. All, All the, the Town. All the Town shows. <laughs> Amazing. And congrats are in order for this fresh Drama League winner. Guys, the Drama League is one of the oldest theatrical awards. It's its 85th year. It's Oof. in its 85th wow. year. It's almost as old as some of its nominees. <laughs> And now yeah. they've been, so they, they, they nominate, what, like a thousand people? I think, it was 80, I think it was 83 this year. They nominate a thousand people. 53, or the 83, okay. 53 okay. or a thousand, yeah. whatever. Same thing. And then they pick one distinguished performance of the year, which is insane. It really is crazy. But yet, I would like to congratulate Brian Cranston, because I know he's watching. Hi, Brian. <laughs> Congratulations, Brian Cranston won for his performance in Network. They also choose outstanding um, productions, and those went to The Ferryman, The Waverly Gallery for a Revival, Hades Town for a Musical, and Kiss Me Kate for a Revival of a Musical. And it was a big party, and they all get together. Derek Baskin was there. They all get together on the dais, and they smooch, and they eat chicken or whatever, and they have a great time. <laughs> And it was hosted by Julie White and Christine, Christine Nielsen. Nielsen of Gary. And congratulations to the winners. Yes. 
this Sweet Charity concert casting has us already buying tickets because it's amazing. Mm. <laughs> so incredible. Big spender you are. Big yeah. Yeah. So yeah. We've, we've known for a little bit that Transport Group, off-Broadway nonprofit, is going to be doing a concert of Sweet, Sweet Charity. Today we got casting. So this is going to be a full ensemble of folks taking on different roles, led by Tony winner Rachel Bay Jones, Bonnie Milligan, Alicia Umfris, Santino wow. Fontana, who's nominated for a Tony this year for Tootsie, John Cariani, Beth Malone, and a whole slate That's of talented amazing. folks. So this is going to be held in the Merkin Concert Hall at the Kaufman Music Center on June 17th at 8.30 p.m. And the evening will be hosted by Fosse dancer Dana Moore. So definitely check this out. I love it. If you're watching Fosse Verdon, you've been thinking about Sweet Charity. Yes. Also on the site, we have a Fresh Face feature with Andy Grotolution, who's a Tony nominee for Tootsie, so check that out. Andy Lefkowitz. Yes. Thank you for your thank service. Thank you for having me. Happy Friday to you. Yes. Caitlin, will you tell us about our guest, please? Gladly. Yes, we have the Derek Baskin here with us in the studio today to celebrate his first Tony nomination for his portrayal of Otis Williams in Ain't Too Proud hyphen, <laughs> the life and times of the temptations. We gotta do full names here. Um, and the show earned 12 total Tony nominations, including Best New Musical. Baskin made his Broadway debut in the 25th annual Putnam County Spelling Bee and went on to appear in Memphis and a whole lot of other stuff. Be sure, be sure to follow him on social media at Derek.Baskin. Make sure you put the period in so you follow the right guy. <laughs> he met Oprah yet yesterday. It's important that you follow him to see this content. <laughs> be sure to leave all of your questions in the comments below and please welcome Derek and Beth. Thanks, Caitlin. Hey. Hello, Derek Baskin. Hey, Tony exactly. nominee, Bar Derek Baskin. Go are, on. Are you used to it? I'm not used to it. I'm we'll just not keep used saying it until you get used to it. It's going to take a while. <laughs> I have so many questions. You've had a lot in the last 24 hours. A lot oh, has man. happened. So many things have happened. I just want everyone to notice. Here's the camera. Do you see the button? Do you uh -oh. see the button? This is a real Tony nominee. It's right there, certified. Folks. It's certified. This means it's real. It's real. <laughs> <laughs> He's got the bling to prove it. Yeah. So you you were at the drama league today. Yes. Yeah. Hobnobbing yeah. with the folks. Yeah. Yeah. They're uh, the kind of supporting my friends. You know, Ephraim Sykes and Jeremy Pope. Where they have uh, drama league nominations, and the show was also uh, nominated. Yeah. Uh, but it's also great to just see your friends. You know, and other shows that you never see because you're on the same schedule. And uh, it was really good to see everyone. Yeah. A lot of people attended. Yeah. And so last night. You did the show? Yeah, just a small just little. Just a normal show. Yeah. Regular Thursday just night. Regular no old good show. Book. Nothing special. Afterward, you like what? Got your backpack on, got ready to go. Well, anything happened in between those two things? Well, before I I went to get my backpack, <laughs> they told me to hang backstage for a little while, and I didn't know why. And you're like, I got a drama league tomorrow. I'm yeah, tired. I'm yeah, I'm tired. I got to get up in the morning for this luncheon. Mm -hmm. So you know, we're hanging off stage with the cast. And uh, I was like, I'm tired, guys. I'm just going to walk on stage just to get some air. Mm -hmm. And I walk <laughs> on stage. And as I'm walking on stage, Oprah Winfrey walks right toward me from the other side of the stage. And I didn't know she was there. You really didn't? They I didn't had no tell clue. you? Well, they tell us that someone's coming, but I never like to know who's coming. Oh, okay. It's, it's so not like stage management's like... Yeah. Oprah's in the house. No. Yeah, yeah. No, thank <laughs> no, God. Okay. I think all of us would freak out, and then we'd all be like stuttering on stage. Okay. And so, yeah. No nerves. Okay. Yeah. You know, it's better if we're like, okay, someone's here. Then it doesn't matter because you don't know who it is. Right. Right. You know what I mean? So she came on stage, and I was just walking. I was like, hey. <laughs> like that's like that's literally what I did. I was like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> that is the appropriate way to greet Oprah. <laughs> That's yeah. how you do it. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, she did the same thing. She was like, ah. Well, there is video. If you go to Oprah's Instagram and, and yours and the other yeah, guys, yeah. you can see she was exuberant. Oh, man. And she said it yeah. was sensational. That's a quote. Sensational. She did. Oprah. Yeah. So that must have been amazing. Yeah. What did she say to you? Uh, you know, she just really, really loved the show. Um, you know, she's a fan of the music, you know, this is um, her generation, you know, yeah. she grew up with this music. And so, you know, she was just really, uh, you know, she called it superb. She just loved the entire production, loved the oh, entire love cast. Um, and, and that kind of support from someone like Oprah, you know, you, that's good stuff. You know That's what I mean? So, look, he's still smiling. Yeah, I Gail, Gail was also there, but Gail you know, King. Gail King. But uh, you know, she has a little small little job that she has to get up in the morning for. Oh yeah. So you yeah. know, she's a working woman. She's a working woman. Yeah, you know, <laughs> and so she she had to leave. So unfortunately, we didn't get to see her. But hopefully, she'll come back at some point, and we can um, give her a hug. But it was so cool, man. That is great. It was you got your really picture cool. taken with her. You I did. I got my own picture with her. Oh. 
Well, you're the lead of the show, Derek. <laughs> Sometimes you have to be like, I am the star I of the like, show. I was like, listen, this is the opportunity. I'm going to oh, take yeah. it. And listen, I the did. four of you can step back for a second. <laughs> Everyone step back. I need a picture with Oprah. I'm glad you got it. That's I did. Good. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah, good. yeah. I'm glad I didn't have like a, you know, sometimes you take pictures and then your face is all crazy because you're so excited. <laughs> Every day I know this. Thick- <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. I'm aware of this I'm issue. just glad that my picture was enlarged. <laughs> Yeah, no, so, you look normal. I did. Normal, as normal as you can be with next to Oprah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm happy with it. How is it for you to do the show and be a Tony nominee? Because, like you said, there are a lot of events you have to do. Yeah. How are you balancing all of it? Uh, You know, it. there is a lot, you know, and I feel like I am an ambassador of for my show. You know, I'm also an ambassador of The Temptations. And, you know, I carry that responsibility. You know, I take it very seriously. Mm-hmm. Um, but I also am just a regular person. <laughs> and I need my rest. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's hard. And you have to really... I saw you napping in the green room earlier. Yeah, yeah. I dozed off. I need some <laughs> Visine <laughs> to pretend like I have been awake this whole time. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, I try to sleep as much as I can. Um, I try to uh, get that alone time whenever I can just to ground myself because mm-hmm. there's so much coming at you. You're being pulled in all kind of directions. And I've never been in this position before. It's my first nomination. It's so giving me chills. Yes, you, know, you are. Uh, uh, my friend, my best friend, James Iglehart, he won the Tony a couple of oh, years I ago. Oh, I think I knew that, yes. Yeah, yeah. James Monroe Iglehart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So star I, of the stage. <laughs> yes, yeah. star mm-hmm. of the stage and screen. And screen. Uh, he, you know, he sat me down and thank God I have him in my life because he's like, okay, this is what's going to happen. And so he kind of What did kind he of, walk you through? Uh, he just told me, he was like, listen, you're going to be pulled in all directions. So just make sure you get that rest. Mm-hmm. Um, make sure you don't, make sure you say yes to the right things and you don't have to say yes to everything. You but said yes also, to us and you're here today. I mean, Thank you very much. would not say yes to you guys? <laughs> are you guys kidding? Are you kidding me? Well, we love you so much. Oh, I love it here, man. I do. I really do. Well, that's good. You have like a, a friend who can sort of mentor you through it. Yeah. Because I think it is a little jarring for some people who haven't been through it. For sure. To yeah. see how many events there are, how much press there is. Yeah. And unlike movies, you got to do eight shows a week. Yeah, you and know. you dance a lot. Yeah. Sergio put you through it. Man, he puts me through the ringer every <laughs> night. Every night I just kind of do this to him a little bit. <laughs> uh, but, you know, for me, the harder part is the talking. Um, and so I have to make sure that I keep my, as I'm talking to you, I'm making sure that I'm placed very properly, yeah. you know, so that I don't, uh, no you know strain anything you know what i mean and you know well I'm you're talking. the narrator of the entire show do you leave the stage very, i i very little. have a 20 you have to, i know you've got to change your costume change. Yeah, yeah yeah other than that i have like a 20 second change a 40 second change and that's it that's it <laughs> So that's it's just crazy. <laughs> this is not a. Sh- this is a full length musical. Listen, I earned this pin. Yes, you did. Like I earned it. <laughs> you absolutely did. And you are telling such. You're, what you said about having the responsibility for this show yeah. means so much because Otis Williams is alive and well. Yes, he is. And how often do you speak with him? Uh, you know, he'll text or call maybe every couple of weeks. You know, we'll because uh-huh. t- you know in. he's on tour as well. You know, so he's a very busy man. And then, you know, I'm busy doing this show. So he'll text me to make sure that I'm healthy, doing all right. And uh, I should probably text him back. Uh, I haven't Confirm talked to him or since deny. Yeah. Do you call him Uncle O? That's the name. I love it. Yeah. Do you call Oprah anything special with the O? No? I ca- well, in my <laughs> mind, she's like my auntie. You know <laughs> what I mean? She's like my favorite auntie. So I call her Auntie O. Auntie yeah, yeah, yeah. O, Uncle O. <laughs> He's got them all. <laughs> all the families all there. All the family, extended family. I'm auntie's but, and what, but I mean, because he is telling the story for a lot of people who are no longer with us, yeah. and you're telling his story, there yeah. must be an incredible bond between the two of you. Yeah, you know... God, it's just nothing like getting to know the real Otis Williams, you know? He's just such a warm guy, um, and he's just very proud. He's a very proud man. He's very proud of what the Temptations have accomplished, um, and they've accomplished a lot, you know? Yeah. And every time we see him, and at this point, I mean, I can't count the many the times that he's come to the show. It's dozens at this oh, point. Oh, really? That's Yeah, great. yeah. He comes all. He's been to every city that we've been to, mm-hmm. um, and each city has been several times, except for Toronto. He only came once, but like everything else... He comes all the time, and every time he comes, there's a new story. Do you know what oh, I mean? Yeah. Which is so interesting because it's like you would think that he's told us all the stories, but right. I mean, he wrote a whole book. He, exactly. So those are his stories, but he's yeah. lived a whole life. There's still always something new that he, a new gem that he drops in on us, and I take that and I'm like, okay, now I'm gonna put that in the show. That's great. Um, and it's just, you know, it's an honor to tell this story, you know. And the people who grew up with this music, a lot of them are coming to see the show, and so you know, that who resp- hasn't grown up with this music? This 
because music is everywhere. Everybody it is knows everywhere. Temptations music. It's do you, true. Do you have a favorite moment or song? Top of Act Two, Can't Get Next to You. You know, that, that music is funky. It is. Man, that's some funky music. <laughs> and it's about... And uh, moves. And, oh, yeah, I'm doing my best dancing. Now, Sergio, <laughs> okay, thank you for that, Sergio. Yeah. Uh, uh, but that the top of Act Two, you know, it's, it's kind of when the Temptations kind of evolved into, like, more funkadelic music. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we're in the 70s. We have our, our bell bottoms on. Yeah. You know, hair gets a little bigger. Froze a little picked out mm-hmm. a little bit. I have to pick mine out. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, so that's my favorite part. One of my favorite parts. And I love it. Well, I know you guys have questions because... Derek Baskin's here. Tony, I'm here, folks. Tony mm-hmm. nominee. We're going to keep saying it because it makes me happy to say it. <laughs> it makes me happy to hear. So let's get to the questions, Caitlin. Yes. So the first question is Alex wants to know if you grew up listening to Temptations music and mm-hmm. if your favorite song from the Temptations has changed since you've been in the show. Uh, okay. Yeah. Well, I grew up every uh, Christmas. We turn on the Temptations Christmas album, right? So uh, that was a staple of my life for I mean, Who owned half that my album? Life. Uh, it was my dad's album. I'm just curious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember. It was my dad. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was my dad. And uh, it was, but my sister, who's the youngest, uh, there's 10 years between me and her. I'm the oldest, and she's the youngest. It was actually her favorite album. So she would tell my dad, like, it's time to it's put time. on the Temptations. Put on the temps. Yeah. And so we would uh, just listen to that album and listening to it. It takes me back to my to my childhood. Mm-hmm. And so it's a great it's a great memory. And also, so as far as favorite songs. Uh, I mean, you know, I have different favorite moments depending on the show. You but, know? But I guess the question is, did your song, did your favorite oh, did Temptations change? change once you got to yes. be in the show versus like when you were a kid or when you listened to it before yeah. you were oh, part of it? No, no, still the same. So, yeah, that, that still never same. changed. So. Still the same. So yeah, what's yeah. your favorite song then? Can't Get Next to still You. Still that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Still that. And <laughs> the funky moves that go with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just yeah. want to put it like that. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. So Jake asks, how is your individual Tony nomination making the experience this time around compared to Memphis's overall show nomination? How many nominations do, does this show have? We have 12, 12. nominations. One, two, 12. Yeah. But now Double yours, digits. What does yours mean to you? Uh, you know, as an artist... Uh, to be recognized for the work that you do. Um, it's just, there's no greater compliment. And we don't necessarily do theater to get recognition, you right. know? The, to do the show, is that's its own reward, you know? So you, you do it for that reward, you don't do it for an award. And so to be recognized for uh, this particular work, um, it means the world to me, because I've never had to do this amount of work to make a role successful, right? So I've mm. never um, you mean been research. Is that what uh, you mean? Research, or? but like I'm not a dancer, oh, so like I had to really work yourself. hard. Yeah, it's a challenge on all fronts for me. Mm-hmm. I've never had to memorize such so much dialogue. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've never carried a show. I've never right, been the, the lead, lead of a show, yeah. um, and so. That, for me, this is all new territory, and it required me to really, you know, study and to stay grounded. And that took a lot of work and more work than I've ever had to do as an artist. And so to be recognized for that, um, you know, it just feels really good. It just really does. does. Yeah, you know, (laughs) yeah. I love that. I love that. So Kurt asks, what has been your most memorable breakthrough moment in your theater history experience let's go back oh well my first okay yeah, yeah. <laughs> my first uh my first broadway show was spelling bee and uh we had a couple of nominations including best new musical yes uh and uh two of the cast two of my cast members were nominated and you as performed well. on the tonys we did and so uh that I didn't know we didn't know what we were going to perform you know how right. to present the show to the masses and so I was like well we have two people nominated we'll just do their, they have a song they had a song together was a duet mm-hmm. I was like I'll probably just do that or something else that's centered around the kids and they were like no we're going to do your song Amazing. and I was like what <laughs> like you're going to do my song on the Tony Awards and they're mm-hmm. like yep and uh, and so that performance uh, was kind of like my introduction into the community because no one knew who I was. No one knew who a lot of us. It was nine people in the cast. Seven of us, it was our Broadway Debuts, debut. Yeah. And so uh, people were like, who's that guy? <laughs> who's this guy singing on this Tony <laughs> stage? And uh, that, was, that was like the, the trending question that night. Like, who's that guy? No one knew. And so I have to, you know, I still thank Bill Finn. He, you know, he, mm-hmm. he introduced me to the Broadway community. He introduced me to the Tony's community. And uh, that was my breakout performance. 
That's amazing. Yeah. What, a, what a trial by fire. Matt, you're out there. In. Yeah, they were like, all right, you're on the Tony's go. I was like, wait. <laughs> <laughs> great that like Celia Keenan Bolger is yeah. nominated and you guys go way yeah. back to the spelling bee together. Yeah. Stuff it's, like that's amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm really happy for her. I wish I can see that play. I know she's genius in it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but we saw each other. We had a press junket the day after all the nominations came out and we we found each other and we just gave each other the biggest hug. I love it. And then I saw, it's so interesting, I saw uh, James Lapine, mm -hmm. uh, who was our director, yes. at the gym the night before. <laughs> uh, and you cannot he, escape the Broadway uh, community. It's true, <laughs> Everywhere. Yeah, and he was, and he had come to see the show, and he was like, "I'm really proud of you." And he's like, "I'm also very proud of Celia." He's like, "My spelling bee babies," and <laughs> it was just really cool. Uh, I love having that connection. Uh, Jesse Ferguson, mm -hmm. who was also in spelling bee, he came to the show last night, and so. Um, Wait, did you say Jesse? It's so nice to see you. Oprah's here. Right. Excuse me for a minute. <laughs> just to stand over there for a second <laughs> in a corner. No, it was so funny because he was like, "Talk on it." Oprah overshadowed me today. <laughs> <laughs> so we laughed about that, but uh, you know it's just great having because that experience Spelling Bee was just a really great experience. It was a real ensemble show. It really truly was, yeah. and it's kind of similar to you know the five of us in the Temptations, you know, because we have to be a unit, like we were a unit in Spelling Bee. More spelling, less dancing. Much more spelling. I sat in a chair like this. <laughs> and hand out those drink boxes. That's right? all I did. A little juice box. <laughs> juice give you a little box. hug. That's it. <laughs> you could do that at the Tonys. Maybe I will. <laughs> For the people who might need a little hug and a little, like... A little com comfort. A little comfort. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a little counseling on the side. Yeah, I'll do that. Yeah, I'll, I'll get, get a few. shake out the old uniform, the old costume. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think that's a great idea. And maybe not this year, but next year you could also offer your services. You maybe, know? yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll a comfort see counselor. <laughs> All right, we have time for one more question. Caitlin. Yes, this will be the last question. So Sarah asks, what advice would you give to someone who wants to perform on Broadway one day? Okay, uh, this is actually very easy. Uh, no one can be you better than you. Hmm. Uh, and do not ever try to conform to what you think other people are wanting to see and on, on what other people are wanting to hear. Um, there's no one way to Broadway. Uh, there's a there's no sign up sheet on 42nd no, and Broadway. If there was, I would have signed. <laughs> I would have signed up, and I wouldn't have gone through the hard knocks I went through. Uh, but you know, there's just no one way to get here. Um, if this is the destination, if this is a dream for you, um, do everything you can where you are regionally. You know, take your acting classes, do community theater, do regional theater. All that prepares you for Broadway. You know, my fondest memories is doing summer stock at uh, Weston Playhouse in Vermont, where they gave me my first, like, big credit. What, what shows did you do up there? I did Smokey Joe's Cafe there, mm -hmm. and then the next summer I did Ragtime. And, so you get uh, to play all these big parts when you're out there in the You world. know what I'm saying? It's good. Uh, but, you know, that really prepared me for what I'm doing now, you mm -hmm. know? Um, and so, you know, but if I try to sound like a Norm Lewis or mm -hmm. a Brian Stokes Mitchell or a Billy Porter, I would have done myself a disservice. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I decided very early on that I will stay in my lane. And sometimes, you know, it was... A lot of rejection, you know, because people are looking for a certain sound or a certain look, and I may not fit that mold. Mm -hmm. But I stuck to who I thought and who I know that I am. Um, and eventually, something came, this role. And uh, it's only because this, any kind of success I have is because I stay true to myself. And so just stay true to yourself. I love that, Derek. Yeah. Guys, I don't need to convince you. To see the Temptations. There are 12 Tony nominations, including one for this guy. Do you see the pop button? It's right there. <laughs> Bam. <laughs> Bam. <laughs> Go see Derek Baskin. Where, whatever he's in, but especially in Ain't Too Proud. See me, I'll be there. For, I'll be there. So just come He'll here. be there. <laughs> he's not going anywhere, I hope. Caitlin, will you take us on out? Thank Gladly. you for coming, Derek. Oh, absolutely. Thank you guys so much for tuning in today. We are live at 5 every single day on Facebook. You can listen to us wherever you get your podcasts by searching for hashtag live at 5 and hitting that subscribe button. Be sure to tune in next week when we got a whole lot of Tony nominees, including Kelly O'Hara and Lily Cooper.